The 1st of August of this year, a new documentary will be available on the late filmmaker John Avelson, called The King of the Underdogs. It will be available to own on Blu-ray and DVD on Chasey.com, plus iTunes and other digital platforms. As I recently covered The Karate Kid, I was fortunate enough to be able to preview this new documentary. Filmmaker Derek Wayne Johnson has spent a long time putting together this documentary detailing John Avelson's career. With interviews with John himself, Sylvester Stallone, Martin Scorsese, Ralph Macchio, Burt Reynolds, Carl Weathers and Talia Shire to name just a few. John Avelson sadly passed away in June of this year at the age of 81 and I had no idea there was a documentary on his career in the works. Like many similar documentaries it details John's career from the beginning from when he worked in advertising and moved into film. It covers all his well-known movies such as Joe, Save the Tiger, Rocky and the Karate Kid films, but certainly covers his lesser known films to cover all bases. What is made clear throughout the documentary is that John was certainly a director that wasn't well known to the general movie public, and maybe through choice of his own the movies he made let them speak for themselves, and less about him as the director and his vision. He always stayed close to the script and was always passionate about the story. That was one of his many skills, getting the audience to care about the characters and be invested in their journey. Stories like Rocky and the Karate Kid really brought across that underdog narrative that the public always seems to flock to. People love seeing the blue collar guy work his way up to success and John was a pro at dealing with material like that. He just balanced the troubles of someone's difficult or challenging life to really bring across something very uplifting by the end. You can't help but get very emotional with films such as Rocky as the credits roll in. I learnt a lot about John Avelson thanks to this documentary. John doesn't hold back from discussing his failures and success and isn't afraid to admit when he was wrong. What I found fascinating was the movies he turned down or was fired from. He was supposed to direct Saturday Night Fever but was dropped shortly into pre-production because of something so stupid. I'm not going to reveal what happened but Hollywood can be a strange bunch. He turned down Rocky II to make another film which he later regretted. Stallone brought him back for Rocky V and John fought to have the original ending where Rocky dies and thought it was the perfect way to end it but the studio said no, Rocky couldn't die. It's interesting to see if things had worked out a bit better for him with his choices or decisions made on the movies he was fired from. He may have gone on to even bigger movies. The Karate Kid really kind of saved him falling out of favour with Hollywood. John wasn't a fan of authority thus being a bit of an outsider of the Hollywood system. The many interviews with the actors he worked with all praised him for his working methods but it was highlighted he could be stubborn to work with, which led to problems on the Jean-Claude Van Damme film Desert Heat. The 90s weren't really a good time for John as you see in the documentary that the work begins to dry up due to not having enough hits. Desert Heat was really the last movie he did and had his name removed from the movie due to studio meddling. His real name appears in the end credits as the director of the film, but he is credited as Danny Mulroon on the poster and DVD case. What I didn't realise was John gave Daniel Craig his first role in a movie called The Power of One. Daniel was hired to read lines to other actors and John was impressed with Daniel's work and gave him a part in the film. With John being obsessed with archiving a lot of his films, there was a wealth of screen tests, behind the scenes material and auditions from his archive that the director Derek pulls from. John Avelson is pretty much regarded as an underrated director, but he was an Oscar winner, certainly not something to scoff at. He directed seven actors to Academy Award nominations. That is extremely impressive and shows he can get the best performance out of an actor. The documentary runs at about 1 hour and 20 minutes. Now you may think that's a little short on covering a director's career and the large amount of movies he directed, but surprisingly it manages to cover all the points very efficiently. It doesn't waste time and gives you enough perspective on the important movies and even the ones that didn't hit the mark. Of course it would have been interesting to know more about The Karate Kid Part 3 and John's views on it and the issues he had with making the movie Desert Heat. I suppose you have to look at it as a highlight of his career and giving some insight into each movie that reflects upon the narrative and direction of the story they are trying to tell with John's career and not an extensive breakdown of each movie. It needs to be digestible for every viewer and not just hardcore film fans. If you are a fan of the Rocky movies and of course the Karate Kid trilogy, you will certainly find this very interesting. Plenty of trivia and it was a great insight into John's career. I learnt a lot from this and who John was and his contributions to cinema. The director told me John thankfully got to see this documentary before he passed away and was there for its premiere and he loved every second of it which is wonderful. For young film fans it's a perfect window into John's catalogue of films and it will certainly help you discover some hidden gems along the way. It's a shame his career was kind of cut short by the late 90s. 
because I still think he had a lot more stories to tell. If you enjoyed the video, you can find more on my YouTube channel, and also you can follow me on Twitter. If you want to help support the channel, you can donate through Patreon and receive monthly perks such as updates on the latest news on my channel, early access to reviews and commentaries before they go live on YouTube. Even the smallest donation can help keep this channel going. Thank you.